So welcome back to another episode of Fishing With Me, Dean Bass. Today we got a pike in the video. As you guys can see here, we finally got a pike. And today we are going to prep it and cook it. So right off the bat here, you got to wipe it down because it is a very slimy, slimy fish. Especially after death. Like once you kill it and bleed it, it's very slimy. So make sure you get your grip on and, you know, wipe it down. I'm just turning on the light here because I totally forgot. You guys can see here, it's a very toothy and scary looking fish. That mouth right there can swallow just about any other fish smaller than it itself. Here you want to make sure you have a sharp knife. You start from the back of the neck here. Again, I am not a professional pike fillet guy. This is my first time actually filleting a pike. So starting off from the neck, I'm going to the dorsal fin and I'm going to work my way back down you know, to the dorsal fin there. Just you know, giving myself a mark. I'm not a professional at filleting this fish. I just want to let you guys know this is my first time. And um, yeah, the meat is actually very white here. I, I was actually very shocked. I thought it would be a lot more bloodier slash yellow slash red. But honestly, it's very clean. It's very clear. Go behind the white bone there on the side. Make your way down. Cut the fillet off. Fillet is turning out real nice. Here comes the second fillet. Look at that. It doesn't look like a lot of meat, but I promise you, there's a lot of meat on it. Here's the second part. Just flip it over and do the same thing. There we go. Looking good. Nice and smooth. Wow, look at that. Now, I was told, and I watched them in the videos, you start from the bus section there and down because I guess the white bone still travels a little like further down and you don't want that section there unless you're like, I mean, maybe I don't know how, so you guys should comment down below if I'm doing it wrong, but as of right now, yeah, I just go behind the butt section and I just work my way down and get the tooth fillet off. So as you can see now, we got the fish uh, thrown out. Um, I'm working the back part, taking the fillet off. That's a nice strip right there, boneless. Same with this one. It's just a little portion of it, but wow, check out the skin, guys. It's like a wallet. Maybe I can dry it up and use it as a wallet cover or something. Bam! <laughs> mm -hmm. So here I am just filleting it. You guys know the drill, just filleting a fish, taking the skin off of it. And honestly, there's a lot of meat already for like two people, so it's actually pretty cool. Again, it's not bloody like a white bass at all. Like, it's not red like a white bass. You see, I'm just laying it out, appreciating the meat. So my next step is what I like to do. I, I like to put sea salt in, in the cold water. I like to soak the fish in sea salt. And I'll fill it up, I'll mix it up and fill it up with water. Get all that nasty stuff out. Here you go, and now I'm just gonna let it sit for five to 10 minutes while I wash up and clean up the other stuff. Okay, it's been sitting for a while now. You can see all that goo rising up to the top. And go ahead and just, you know, filter and wash that out. Just rinse it out, cold water on full blast. Once you do that, now I'm just gonna you know, be picky about it and just clean off any kind of skin or maybe I feel a little bit of bones, anything that I'm paranoid with. <laughs> but yeah, just, you know, detailing your fish, make it look nice. If I was in the wild, I wouldn't care. I would just keep it. And here I diced them all up into nuggets and I'm gonna rinse them one more time just to make sure. I'm gonna dry them up and freeze them overnight. Because what you do is once you freeze them, it tenderizes um, in the fridge, freezer I mean, and then when, once you defrost it, it's nice and uh, tender. Alright guys, so it's the next day. I got my oil, veggie oil. We're going to go ahead and pour it in this pot here. Again, just something real simple. I think that's enough. It's enough for the, the fish because I did cut them into like nugget size, so they should be able to... Oop, I forgot to turn the light here. There we go. So I did cut them into like nugget size, so they should be able to fit all in that pot. So I got one egg. I didn't check and uh, I only got one left. So we're only going to be cooking one. Um, we're going to batter like maybe two or three just with the egg and the rest is just going to be with the Cajun, the two-step style. And just first, we're going to go ahead and stir this up. This is no cooking show, right? This is just, uh, I want to try what this tastes like, see what all the hype is all about. 
Honestly, I had them in the past. I'm telling you guys, it's been like probably like 12 years, 10 years, 12 years since I had pike. And last time I had it, I didn't have the greatest experience because I think my dad like tried to boil it, you know, like make it into soup style and it is stank. It was nasty. <laughs> so this time I filleted the skin off and they're nice and dry now. We're just going to go ahead and put this egg batter in. I think that's good enough. Like I said, it's only for a few pieces. So we're going to go ahead and throw the pike meat into the egg. And I'm not gonna lie guys, in my honest opinion, my humble opinion, the meat looks a lot better than white bass. Like it's not as red. It's actually pretty white. Like it's actually pretty clear and uh, uh, not as meaty red, if that makes sense, bloody red. Maybe it's the place that I got it from. Maybe it's just a healthy pike. I don't know, all fish are different depending where they live. So I'm excited to try this. I'm actually really excited to try this pike. So this is gonna soak for like two, three minutes. Just have that little coating on there. It's kind of hard to show you guys with my face in there, but. It's in the egg right now. It's just gonna sit there for two, three minutes. And you don't want the oil to be too hot too. So the flavor that we're gonna be using is the Cajun two-step. You guys can see that right there. I know it's a little bright, but that's what it is. Cajun two-step. It's uh, that's money, dude. <laughs> the fire one, okay? Let's pour a bunch in there. All right, maybe we just mix it up. Might even need a little more. Oh yeah, we need a little more. So that's what it looks like. It's a little red now. Right, hopefully I can hide my face. There we go. All right, just a little bit. I don't want to over season it. So let's let it sit for a little bit. Oh yeah, look at that. And it's going. It's looking real nice, y'all. Real nice. Wow. Let me see if I can show you guys. There you go. Look at that. It's floating around. It's cooking. It smells good. Can you guys smell that? It smells awesome. I'm excited. So I do want to clarify that this fish did give me like a bad um, vibe, right? Like a bad, I don't want to eat it type kind of style because they do smell. We catch them in the summertime and they smell very, very raw and bloody. Like they just smell very fishy. So I just never had the like urge to try it or eat it. But for some reason this winter, I just, I've been watching videos and I'm like, you know what? It does look good. The meat actually looks really tasty. It looks very clean and very bright. So, so I decided to keep one and I wanted to try it out myself. So I am excited to try it for the first time or well, second time. This fish is definitely misjudged by its uh, appearance because it looks like a gator it looks mean it looks uh, dangerous and it, it, it can be you know but now that i'm able to process this and eat it myself i can't wait to show you guys my reaction to what i think of it so it's almost done i'll see you guys like right now besides the sizzling noise back there i think the fish is ready to be uh tested it smells really good okay it smells delicious and amazing i'm really excited to try this so here we go It smells really good, guys. It smells just like the two-step uh, Cajun. You can smell the fish, but it's not like something where it's like, bleh, you know? Oh, wow. Wow. It doesn't taste the way how it smells at all. Like, my, my, my. It's actually very good. Mmm, it's very tender too, like it's not soft and like um, it doesn't split up like a white bass, right? Or a panfish. The meat actually stays together very well. Okay, I really want to try other seasoning now. So now it is the moment of truth. I got the one that was battered with egg and the seasoning. It looks a little different because it had the batter on it, so it's a little darker than normal. You can see it right there. So it is a little darker. It's still pretty hot. So this fish is definitely overlooked. It is a tasty fish. I can say that right now. Like it is tasty. It's easy to clean. It's easy to cut and fillet and prep. It's also fun to catch them during the winter time. And maybe that does play a huge role because you can say that all fish in the summertime don't taste that well because the water is just so warm. It's 75, 80 degrees and the fish meat is just so mushy. But during the springtime and the colder season, uh, just being able to catch them, eat them, it's... Um, it's very good. Like it's overlooked. It's it's underlooked, I should say. Like people should try it more often. Let's go ahead and give this a shot. Right here. You can you can smell the egg. Mmm. I actually like the egg style better. You can kind of taste like the eggy, uh, like the yolky taste to it. That make any sense? Right. It's a little crispier, but it does taste better. 
I like it a lot more. Oh yeah, that's good. My goal is to catch another one and cook and eat it just like this. That's good. So if you guys haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Leave comments down below if you guys like this stuff. Hit the thumbs up and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.